Hello, 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 my friends. Welcome to episode number 541 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. What have I got cooked up for you this week? Well, first, my guest is Pierre Ansquier from Interface Concept, and we're talking about 3UVPX, SOSA, packaged Ethernet switches, and a whole lot more. Also this week, I investigate new space-bound mineral-collecting robots developed by E. TH Zurich and why these legged robots could be a game changer for future space travel. But first, please welcome Pierre to Fish Fry. Hi Pierre, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so first off, for my audience who may not know, give us a brief reintroduction to Interface Concept. What are you guys all about? Okay, uh, Interface Concept is a French company uh, created 37 years ago and uh, focused on the embedded uh, market COTS product uh, since 30 years, more or less 30 years. We are uh, 50 employees. We uh, do a business around 15 million of uh, euro per year. Also, as I said, uh, mainly on the embedded market uh, for defense. We have uh, marginal activities in the industry, but uh, most of the business is on defense. We are located, for those who know France, we are located in Brittany, and we are doing business all around the world. Uh, depending on years, it's uh, around uh, 60 to 65 percent uh, outside France, 25 percent in the U.S., 25% in Asia, Korea and India, depending on years, always uh, 10 to 15% in the rest of Europe, Italy, Germany, Spain, UK is a little bit more difficult for us. And the rest is for the, our domestic market where we work with the, the main actors of the defense in France. We, on the other important point, because we are in the US, we have built a strong partnership since 25 years with Elma today and uh, ACT Technico uh, at the very beginning, so the team uh, Ken Grob and uh, Mark Littlefield and all, all these guys are our friends and our very good uh, representative guys here in US. So tell me more about your main product offerings. Okay, we have two main ranges of product. The Ethernet switches on one hand, on the other hand, CPU uh, and FPGA boards, which represent, let's say, more or less, to be precise, 40% with Ethernet switch, 40% with uh, SBC and FPGA board. The rest is for uh, correspond to the MCOTS product, adaptation of existing product and all legacy uh, range of product that we have for the French market. So on one hand, SBC or, uh, switch and the other hand, SBC and FPGA boards. Main particularity of the US market, on the US market, we mainly sell Ethernet switches. U.S. market for our SBC is a little bit uh, is, is difficult for us. So you guys expanded your 3U VPX product line aligned with the SOSA technical standard. So what kind of cards are included in this set? Okay. In fact, we have been, I think we have been one of the very first, maybe the first company to, thanks also to our partnership with Elma, we have been the first company to deliver a VPX 3U Ethernet switch fully compliant with the very first SOSA profile switch, which is named the Comet 4590, which provides two completely independent Ethernet plan one for data plane, one for control plane. And this was the very first one. Then we have uh, introduced several other switches. And this year we will unveil 
two new Ethernet switch compliant with uh, SOSA profile. Uh, one of them to introduce 100 gigabit Ethernet capabilities and the other one which is a, an extension of the 4090 I was talking about just before with the same switch sorry with two uh, independent plane but introducing optical Ethernet uh, ports. So this is for Ethernet switches and we have also today an IRM SBC board compliant with a SOSA profile and within this year we will launch another CPU based on the Tiger Lake Intel processors which will be fully compliant with the expansive IO SBC profile of the SOSA standard. So you guys mostly provide boards, but you also have delivered a packaged Ethernet switch, right? Up to now, it was not the case. We focused on uh, board delivery, which are integrated by the final customer or by our partners, depending on the case. And But this year, we decided to unveil two different uh, packaged uh, products one dedicated for standard environment and the second one which will be available during the second half of this year which will be dedicated for Arch environment both uh, offering 32 uh, Ethernet ports and of course the second one delivered with military uh, connectors uh, MIL 38999 connectors to meet the requirements or the demanding requirements of our customers. So Pierre, what does the future look like for Interface Concept? So this year, as I told you, we have an, an important activity on uh, three UVPIX um, form factors because we are supposed to launch more or less uh, uh, six or seven boards. Uh, this is very important. Also, the two package uh, Ethernet switch uh, we were talking uh, just before. And uh, we have in mind, we are looking for other... Uh, also, thanks to this, uh, the opportunity uh, we, ha we, we have during this, uh, this very interesting, uh, uh, those very interesting days uh, here at ETT, uh, we are thinking to other partnership, maybe other to consider other form factor, but this will be maybe for our next uh, <laughs> next uh, meeting. I love it. Well, Pierre, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Switching gears a bit. Let's talk about the moon. Did you know that several different space agencies, like ESA, the European Space Agency, are currently planning missions to the moon to explore the possibility of mining and collecting raw materials there? But how exactly are we going to explore the moon to do this? Well, if ETH Zurich has anything to do with it, we'll be sending not just one solitary rover to explore the moon, but an entire fleet of flying devices and vehicles that complement each other. So, one of the types of robots at the heart of this ambitious plan is called the Enimal. You've probably seen it. It's a legged robot that is being used for a variety of applications on Earth today. Some in the industrial realm, actually. It has built-in depth sensors that can perceive obstacles. It can localize at centimeter accuracy in both confined spaces and large open environments. And most importantly, it can reliably move over rough terrain. So, this team from ETH Zurich, along with some colleagues from Germany, outfitted three ENIMALs with a range of measuring and analysis instruments that would potentially make them suitable space exploration devices in the future. So, one of the very important keys to the success of this research was the use of multiple robots. Philip Arm, a doctoral student in this research group, explains this element of the project like this. Using multiple robots has two advantages. The individual robots can take on specialized tasks and perform them simultaneously. 
Moreover, thanks to its redundancy, a robot team is able to compensate for a teammate's failure. Getting the benefits of both is a matter of finding the right balance. So this team needed to balance redundancy and specialization. And how they accomplished this was by making two robots specialists and one robot a generalist. For the specialists, one of them was programmed to excel at mapping terrain and classifying the geology and was equipped with a laser scanner and several cameras. Very importantly, some of those cameras were also equipped with the ability to do spectral analysis in order to gather initial clues about mineral composition of the rock around it. The other specialist robot was programmed to precisely identify rocks using a Raman spectrometer and microscopy camera. The generalist robot was a bit different. It was programmed to have a broader range of abilities that included both terrain mapping and rock identification. But that also meant that its equipment could perform these tasks with less precision. Philip Arm maintains that this third generalist robot makes it possible to complete the mission should any of the robots malfunction. And it was this built-in redundancy and resiliency to potential failure that helped this team win the SRIC and ESA Space Resources Challenge. And their prize? A one-year research contract to further develop this technology. And this team plans in the future to add robots with wheels to the mix as well. Henrik Klovenbach, a senior scientist in this group, says this about the potential combination of legged and wheeled robots on the moon. He says, Legged robots like our animal cope well in rocky and steep terrain. For example, when it comes to climbing down into a crater. Robots with wheels are at a disadvantage in these kind of conditions, but they can move faster on less challenging terrain. For a future mission, it would therefore make sense to combine robots that differ in terms of their mode of locomotion. Flying robots could also be added to the team. So this team is also planning on building more autonomy into their robots as well. Right now, all data collected from these robots goes into a control center where an operator assigns tasks to specific robots. In the future, semi-autonomous robots could directly assign certain tasks to each other with control and intervention options for the operator. Super cool, right? So if you want even more information about these super cool space robots, I've included a couple links below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com and in the YouTube description for this week's episode as well. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into Twitter, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you would like to follow my personal Twitter account, check out Amelia D. 1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, sure, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series, hosted by yours truly. <laughs> and by clicking the links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page, you can also subscribe to this here podcast through Spotify, Podbean, or Apple Podcasts. And remember, if you'd like to further support this podcast, please leave me a review on that podcasting platform of your choice. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on eejournal. For the week of July 21st, 
2023. I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.